let's start with the movement first. We have elements if we want to move any weight. Could be our joints, could be you are moving something else. Let's start with this, something else. Small ball, I need to have an idea, I need to have a direction, weight, accent, breathing. The, these are the elements. Let's say I want to move the ball forward. So I want to move the ball forward to which direction? We said forward. The idea is I want to move the ball. Okay. How do I move the ball? I can roll it, shift it, lift it, put it down. But I can't turn it. Eve, if I turn it, I'm just staying at my place. Right. So my idea is to move the ball forward is my direction. The weight is I lift it, I put it down. The last thing is, am I, no, how do I move, fast or slow, is my accent, and am I breathing in, or am I breathing out, or I'm, or just not taking any breath, yeah, these are the hidden elements of the movement, would you like to say it in another words, like, for this movement, what am I really doing, or what's my brain doing with me, okay, so, there are uh, a lot of things that are required from the brain to happen to make the movement of the ball mm -hmm. uh, possible. Okay. Uh, for example, you have to be able to feel the ball in your hand. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you have receptors in your fingers that tell you, for example, pressure. Mm -hmm. So you can actually feel the ball. There is a feedback loop through your arm inside your your spine, and from your spine it travels up uh, your brain. Okay. It starts in the brain stem and uh, your cerebellum, and then towards the prefrontal cortex. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> we have to be able to notice that there is a ball. You can notice this by feeling for example, but also you can notice this by seeing, which for your brain is the major contributor to information from the outside, okay? Mm -hmm. So then you, we have to have kind of a map of how to move our joints. There mm -hmm. are many, many maps in our brain about where is our body in space, Mm -hmm. about we have representations of our fingers of our hands forearms but especially uh the the joints are important to our brain because this is where the movement in our bodies occur so our muscles contract but they can only move the part that is a joint because the forearm cannot bend mm -hmm. the bone is rigid okay so right. only where bone and bone is connected Okay. There's some movement happening, and in those joints there are uh, like the 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 biggest uh, collection of receptors, because this is where the magic happens. Mm -hmm. This is where the movement happens. For example, your finger consists of three joints by itself mm -hmm. alone. Okay, so there are so many receptors in your hand alone, because inside here are multiple joints as well, a lot of bones even more joints in our feet okay like 30 33 joints alone in our feet so a lot of input sensory input to our brain so that we first of all get to know and feel what we want to move mm -hmm. and after that like uh you said i want to move the ball forward and at a certain speed Accent. So now, accent. yes, the accent. And now there comes uh, the prefrontal cortex and the basal ganglia, which are just areas of the, the brain right in front. And they are involved in planning movement. So without the prefrontal cortex and the basal ganglia, you cannot move. Okay. How okay, so because of uh, with voluntary movement, something you want to do mm -hmm. consciously. You okay. need activation of the prefrontal cortex. It's impossible to move in a voluntary manner 
if there is no activation in these in these areas. Okay, how, and from there, okay, you want uh, any, any I mean, <laughs> How would I know if they're activated or not? Like if I'm able to do the movement or not? The quality of your movement. Ah, for example, if like the movement is going to happen in the quality with the right accent, so the speed, the velocity in which you want to do it. Is it happening in an efficient way? This can tell you from movement alone if there is quality activation in those brain areas uh, which are responsible Understood. for making the movement plan. Okay, so when I show them a movement and say, please move your partner like this, and this happens, so that means mm -hmm. it is... We have a problem either in the planning. Mm -hmm. It could also be we have a problem in the feeling. Mm -hmm. For example, their left hand, if they like want to pull somebody mm -hmm. for like a dance move or something, mm -hmm. and they cannot feel their left hand very well, they will always pull more with their right hand because the better understood of the 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 feeling, yeah. the brain the brain always wants uh, to to move the safer side, um. like. If you have more information, it's more predictable for your brain what is going to happen mm -hmm. so the brain feels safer and it will always use the better side, the safer side. Okay? Okay. Okay. And we will be learning in the workshops like some tricks or somehow how to yeah. balance this challenge. I would how say. to improve. How we to... will learn uh, how, to, how to find out which part is not doing its job. For example, your cerebellum is okay. like uh, the, has like the control function. Okay, so the movement plan goes inside the body, and a copy of the movement plan goes to the cerebellum, mm -hmm. and the input from inside the body goes through the cerebellum, and the cerebellum is kind of controlling. Okay, was this the move we wanted to do? Understood. And if not. And if not, the cerebellum will communicate with the prefrontal cortex and said, hey, try better next time. This didn't work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's responsible. For example, it has more respons responsibilities, but the cerebellum also is responsible for controlling your movement plan. Did it work? For example, I want to do the piano hand, mm -hmm. like a, a really smooth wave. And it's like this. I so see. cerebellum telling your prefrontal cortex, look, buddy, you don't try hard enough. Try better next time. Mm -hmm. Example how you can improve the cerebellar function mm -hmm. to make movements more smooth, more effortless. Understood. Once the right the... speed, the right rhythm. The the wanted speed and right and, and wanted yes within. yes okay. the once we talked in one of, one of our sessions you mentioned like it is hard for some people to move their wrist because they do move their hands or finger and do not move their really wrist because the map of their wrists are really blurry mm -hmm. is how I describe it it's really blurry and they because they have never moved their wrist without their fingers or without their hand mm -hmm. okay so so this is hand movement my hand is moving up and down mm -hmm. and now my wrist is moving so the movement comes from my wrist mm -hmm. but we need every joint to be able to be controlled uh, in isolation mm -hmm. to make the whole kinetic chain work together more effortless, smooth, and with the right amount of energy used. Otherwise, it, you are going to expend a lot more energy than you need to. Uh -huh. It gets harder and it wears out your joints because, for example, your wrist is not working. You are always overusing your hand, overusing your elbow, overusing your shoulder because the joint in the middle is not working properly. This is why it does not look really effortless when someone is trying to do right. it. Yes. For example, in dance or ballet or figure skating, you want you want it to look smooth and effortless from the outside. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So you need to have control of every joint in isolation. And when you can control every joint in isolation, for example, like, mm -hmm. can you move your finger without moving the other ones? Mm -hmm. Is it possible? Yes. Like your thumb? Yes. Uh, so with the ring finger, you see, it's more difficult. Little finger is okay. But of course, this varies from a person to person. Understood. Okay, and we let's make a small example about a movement. So you ask mm -hmm. me to do something, and then you show me what I could improve, and then I would do it taller or better or improve it more. Would you like me mm -hmm. to do one of my joints? For example, the, does this ball bounce? Uh, <laughs> if I bounce right now, will be it's not a good environment. But I oh, can... does it does it bounce or is it a hard ball? No, it's a hard one. I can't get the okay. tennis. Anymore. It's okay. But what Just, you want uh, to drop it to the floor? No, 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 not not. Uh, I would uh, suggest bouncing it on the wall and just catching it. Okay. Okay. So you see, while catching, you was like, like right. a little. Okay. It was not smooth. It was not effortless. Okay. okay. That's true. And for That's example, true. right now, yeah, that looked more effortless. And for example, what you could do is just get aware of depth how far are things in space and i will try to do this with the camera you could uh, use a, a small target mm -hmm. and you could go towards your face and away from your face like a couple of times mm -hmm. this is called a pencil push-up okay which helps your eyes get a feeling of what it is like to move together and outward to judge about how far in space are things, which right. should improve. Yeah, you, you can go ahead and try it. This is how you can improve, like bring it in towards your nose or between your eyes is okay too. Those are just different. Look at the tip of the pen. And I already see a problem there. Okay. Because, you're, because your right eye is not moving in as good as the other one. You want me to, you want me to go here? Like, is this better? Both, yeah, both, both eyes need to be on the tip of the pen. Better? <laughs> yeah, your left eye is looking at the pen and your right eye is not right now. Okay. Okay, let's change. So this, this, this is, uh, it's possible that this, uh, better? yeah, it's better with the, the bigger target. Mm -hmm. huh. so that we would for you we would use a bigger target okay you, you, you want me to show you what it looks like uh yeah please, just please. it looks know. like this it looks like this for everyone else on the camera oh i mean you I'm see that train so your brain is kind of cutting out your right eye which makes it harder to know how far is the ball from my body okay Okay, I will be interested to and know. By just practicing uh, working your eyes together, it uh, sh you should be able to catch a ball a lot better. A lot of people who are kind of scared of balls or volleyball, they hate basketball and stuff. Okay? It's because they don't know how far the ball is from them because their eyes are not converging. This is the movement when the eyes move in together. Mm -hmm. Their eyes are not converging very well. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's... This also tells us a lot about the brain because the cranial nerve, it's already better now. So you already have some practice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the, the good point about this technique, I would say, if you allow me to say technique, that mm -hmm. it does not require years of no. process. It it's just makes sense. sense. Yeah. Instant. And then you And that's the, the wonderful thing about brain based training. Mm -hmm. The response of the brain is immediate. Even so you all you can you can tell if this exercise helps you mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. Understood. You can find out very easily how to uh, apply it very individually to yourself. Okay. I this think I think we gave them enough of what's going to happen. I mean, mm -hmm. what I'm going to 
show in this workshop is the hidden elements of the movement applied on other things and on our joints. So how we shift the yes. shoulder when we turn it, even by walking, by sitting. I want to go like more really in very possible options. And I want to use. So let's do, let's do let's do one more thing because yeah. I know a lot of dancers care about uh, flexibility. Okay. Yes. Okay. So yeah. I will just show something on myself. Okay. Okay. I'll just step back a little bit so they can see I'm really bracing. Mm -hmm. And now I'm trying to go into shoulder flexion. And you see there's like 10 degrees left. Okay. So I'm not overcompensating. I'm really staying down. And I'm trying to you see you can go very straight up. For me, it doesn't work right now. I'm really trying hard. This is all I can do right now. Okay. 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 And I'm just going to do coordination drill for my fingers. Like I'm just going to try to circle my fingers. Okay. I want to. I want to go also. Should Should I take the same, same arm? Yes. It, it you see a better result with the arm that is not as flexible as the other one. Well, okay. So for me, it's left. I need to look better. Yes, but don't don't move from your rib cage. You have to keep your rich your rib cage down to to see exactly what the shoulder is doing and not the lower body. This is actually pretty good. Okay, I will just pick up the right one. I just circle each finger. Try to circle them without moving the other fingers and do like three or four circles each. This is just an example. Not every exercise takes that long, you know? I just want to make sure that I can move all the fingers. And you see my thumb is really ratchety. It's not smooth, okay? Mm -hmm. So I would, in, in the future, I would spend more time on my thumb. Well, if okay. I focus, I can do it. But if I'm looking at you, my other fingers are... It's, it's really hard. Okay. So I did every finger, four circles inside, four circles outside. Let me go back. Can you see an improvement? Definitely. Okay. Yeah. So Wait. this is this is just by activating the cerebellum. Yeah. And go down. Okay. <laughs> okay. You see? There is way more freedom in moving. Okay. But well, come on, they will say that we are lying because we are, yeah, we need to do it on, yeah, we will do it on others in the workshop. But, but they have the video yeah. and they can try for themselves. Sure. Therefore, and see if it works for them or it doesn't. Yeah. Sometimes for them, moving the fingers is so hard mm -hmm. that it's actually decreasing performance. And they okay. get more stiff because it's too hard and the brain does not feel safe. Can I but add? for me, because my brain now has a better map of my thumb moving, mm -hmm. it allows me more performance in this uh, instance, it's flexibility. Can I say it in a simple way? Because right now we have controlled the fingers or we have moved mm -hmm. them, which is the very the last joint of the arm. Everything mm -hmm. on my arm is right now under my control. So it could be like you did. Doesn't, it's it's a oversimplified. It's yeah. oversimplified. Yeah. But it, uh, the brain, for the brain, the hands have very great importance because you need to grab things. Mm -hmm. The representation of your hands is much bigger than, for example, your shoulder, although the shoulder is bigger than your hand in reality. Mm -hmm. but okay, so the map. The map of your hands takes up a huge space compared to your shoulder. In my brain, like... In your brain. In the map of your brain, your hands have a representation which is a lot bigger. Okay. Because I And the people, if they're interested in this representation, they can uh, look up uh, homunculi. H-O-M-U-N-C-U-L... I. How how they look? Okay. Or homunculus. Homunculus. homunculus uh, just Google it, and you will get pictures of little uh, people with super large hands, super large lips, mm -hmm. because 
to survive for your brain, your face is really important. Your nose, you have to be able to smell if something is dangerous. Eyes, hands and feet. They're really, really important for your brain. So mm -hmm. working on them has a much larger benefit than, for example, working on your hip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because hip, the, the representation of the hip is much smaller. You will not get the same effect mm -hmm. as working on your feet, your hands and your face. Unless I'm a person who uses my hip in everything, literally everything, then it will be different. Yes, yes, but still, your yeah. hand, your representation of the hand will be bigger. But mm -hmm. the representation of your hip, if you use it a lot, will be more clear. Understood. Okay, so even if there's a big map, it can still be blurry. Mm -hmm. I understand. Okay. Okay, we will be going this details. Ah, one more thing to connect. We have two more things. These elements will be also connected to target, goal, which we discussed like use session before, but I want to, I'm going to use the word goal. I don't have issue with the word goal. I just had issue with the thinking way. And I, I wrote mm -hmm. on the blog, what is really the difference between target and goal. And I'm going to address this using the elements and the purpose, all this, all this session, what I'm going to do with you even, it's for fulfilling in or for improving our purpose. Just like to know where are we going with our purpose. So we will be telling, I will be telling, we'll be leading for a purpose. We need a purpose, otherwise we're not existing. And mm -hmm. about the food, we also have made the session video for them. Like you and me, we talk about the food. But is there anything special you want to say in like in a few seconds? What are they going to expect? I mean, for me, it's very simple. They will just get the, like, as you already told, the things or the science, yes, uh, from having not great food for your body. Yes. Yes. I will be just very simplifying this. If you just feel those after food, then this food should be made different. But do you okay. want to say something? Yes. I just want to uh, let them know mm -hmm. um, that... We will, I will give them five questions mm -hmm. and we already kind of started with the first one. Okay. <laughs> okay. And th they can use those five questions mm -hmm. to find out what is the perfect nutrition for them Understood. because it's highly individual mm -hmm. because we are genetically, we all defer a great amount. So not every food is for everyone, mm -hmm. but I narrowed it down to, 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 to five simple questions mm -hmm. and there is a, uh, Reihenfolge, I don't know the English word right now, like the, uh, the mm -hmm. most, there's the most important, a more important question. And then we go to the lesser important questions, sure, so but I'm... yeah, that's, uh, how do you say it? It has a flow. Yes, kind of, okay, there is kind of an order. So, so there's w one more important question. If you, if you, if you screw this one up, mm -hmm. you mess with all the other ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have to uh, go step by step, mm -hmm. but it is very simple. Okay. It is very, very simple. And we will go through this together. Okay. So they will, will have a better understanding if they are kind of, working it out for themselves and if i come if i if i come to you and i just tell them do this this and this no one will, uh, will remember anything sure we need to let them go so but if we kind of work through this together and everyone has to contribute mm -hmm. they will remember it uh uh way better Very nice. and then it's it's a step-by-step -step process that they can follow mm -hmm. So oh, it's, it's really, really easy and they can take their time. If you take like five months, like one month for each question, perfect. You will never have to deal with nutritional problems after that. Never. Very nice. We are going to make a huge And you will not need an expert to do it. Even if you have never 
concern yourself with food at all. And you don't know the difference be between carbohydrates, fats, and uh, protein. Even if you don't know this, you will uh, be able to follow those five questions and make a perfect relationship with food for yourself. Okay, I see where it's going. I mean, maybe, maybe I should be asking other questions, but I know what you're talking about. And for me, it's, I'm listening and I know. And I'm, okay, I wish them to step in the workshop to get a small picture of food because we all need food. Food includes drinks, also not just food, like coffee, tea, whatever it is. Yes. Food, dressing all those, the dressing the elements. So it's feel like a very rich workshop we will do from morning till the six. Yes. Great. And I will, I will give like a, like a free one on top. Oh. With the nutrition. I will let them know uh, from a brain perspective, when is it better to eat what? Oh, that's very nice. So like okay, when so this is, this is not necessary for being healthy, mm -hmm. but this is like the, the sprinkle on top of the cake. The flavor. Or feeling even more energetic. Very nice. So, ah, uh, so the food should make me feel energetic after that. I should not be feeling tired. Mm. Yes, we already discussed this one. <laughs> okay, great.